Let's get technical, huh? Joining us for a technical look at the central <laughs> bank decisions. Olivia Newton-John, is that what you're laughing yeah, at? Yeah, yeah. Let's get physical, let's get technical. Uh, this is not Olivia Newton-John, this is Yannick Now, portfolio manager at Linda Van King Asset Management. She was great, though, in the yeah. 80s, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're here to talk technicals, though, and uh, and you've, you've brought us a 10-year gilt yield yes. to talk a little bit more about this. Obviously, yeah. the uh, BOE uh, rate policy wasn't changed today, but the long-term uh, bond yield is uh, really uh, is really moving. I mean, if we, uh, if we look at the, uh, the gilt, uh, we had this long-term trend of uh, the yield going down, and now we see that we escaped this, uh, this trend, and the yield is above 2%. Uh, we think that unless there is some action from the BOE in terms of quantitative easing, which doesn't seem to be the case, uh, the yield on the guilt could uh, go even higher, uh, around 2.5%. Uh, and. Uh, it will be maybe the, the level where be the, the uh, Bank of England will intervene. Uh, the, this, asset, this, this, uh, this asset class is, uh, is, has, is seen as a, a safe haven. Nevertheless, we have to point out that uh, it's always been very volatile. I mean, the volatility of the guild has always been uh, above 6%. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to invest into a 2% yielding asset with 6% volatility in current uh, environment. Mm. Um, well, okay. That's, I did say I wrote an excellent article in this week's CTM, by the way, suggesting oh, yields, gilt yields had room to go high. Yannick, so, yes. so I, I just want to say I didn't book Yannick to come on and support <laughs> the thesis of the article that I wrote. Anyway, it's, ni it's nice to have you. Here, here's the thing. Um, I suppose actually, David, bring you in on this is whether um, the UK, as, as tail risk declines elsewhere, whether the UK potentially goes to the front of the ugly. Q. Oh, I have, no, no, no. I, th I think at the end of the day, if the UK does um, growth-wise gather traction this year, which is our central case, and we do have a recovery uh, through the quarters of 2013, then I think that um, risk will be taken um, off the table. But having said that, um, obviously, you know, in an environment where risk appetites have been improving, then obviously, you know, the guilt market, you know, will be, you know, as we're describing, mm -hmm. yields probably, you know, trend slightly higher from here. The risk will be that, uh, you know, UK move into a triple deep recession, and that could trigger some uh, more policy intervention yeah. from the uh, Bank of England. But before, uh, until that, uh, I think uh, people will be uh, more likely to buy equity or to buy uh, corporate bonds. Look, we saw a huge recovery in the financials last year, and, yes. and so far this year, so good. I mean, we're yes. only, what, 10 days in, something like that. Yes. Why are you singling out Danske Bank uh, in oh, comparison? I'm to looking the at the uh, equity of uh, Danske Bank uh, since the beginning of last year against uh, the broad uh, banking, European banking equity market. Uh, to single out one point, it's uh, today the, uh, the ECB could, uh, uh, it's unlikely, but they could reduce the deposit rate. Uh, to a negative territory. Uh, it has been uh, uh, viewed for by many uh, market uh, participants that it was too risky for banks across Europe because it will reduce their deposit, their interest rate margin. If we look at the example of Denmark uh, via Danske Bank, we can see both on the equity market here on this graph, but you have, you have the same point of view on five years CDS, the fact that the bank, in fact, immediately mm. after the, uh, the 5th of July, which was, in fact, the, uh, the cut of the deposit market, overperformed the banking, uh, the European banking index, and are still doing very well. So the argument of negative interest Trade, negative deposit rates in Europe being too dangerous for banking, I think, is uh, overstated. Okay, um, let's move on. And, and last but not least, you've got the the five-year Irish paper versus the Spanish paper. Yes. And we're looking at this bond auction today, yes. the Spanish bond auction. Solid, solid. Spanish again. bond auction was fantastic. I mean, one of the bonds were the five-year bonds. It was more than two times oversubscribed. The ten-year yield is uh, under five percent. It's doing uh, everything is doing uh, very well for Spain. Uh, if for uh, for uh, uh, Ireland, it was the same. I mean, uh, we had the bond issue, 2.5 billion. Uh, and here's the white line. I'm yes, saying. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so far, uh, last year and the beginning of the year, the two are trending together. We think that the spread will widen, and in fact, Ireland will uh, overperform uh, Spain for technical reasons as well as supply and demand reason. I mean, Spain will issue one of the 21.3 billion of bond this year. Uh, Ireland is likely to issue only 10 billion. Ireland will might be able to be eligible to uh, the OMT uh, this year if they issue another 10-year bond or if they tap the 9-year bond. Uh, and yeah. it seems that Ireland is more likely to uh, ask uh, you know, uh, for, for the ESM to uh, uh, retroactively sure. bail out banks. Uh, Yannick, we've got to go because we've okay. got a date, a hot date with the ECB uh, in you. just a couple of minutes. Uh, Yannick, now it's Portfolio Manager from Glendale King Asset Management. Speaking of a couple of minutes, we're what?